Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to speak all about product differentiation. This is a presentation which I have presented in many different places, including global sources and also face-to-face uh, -face in events, for example, in London. Basically, in today's video, this is the most updated. I updated this presentation just for my channel, just for you guys for this specific video. This is the most updated version of this presentation. So even if you've watched it before, uh, I encourage you to watch it again because it is probably, in my opinion, one of the best presentations out there when it comes to product uh, differentiation. So if you're currently selling on Amazon or if you're looking into develop developing a product, but you don't know how to differentiate your product, this video is for you. Here's a quick peek, a uh, 15 second video of what to expect from this presentation. If I was to tell you today that I want to sell a cup on Amazon, a lot of people will say, oh, cups or, or coffee cups are so saturated. But the minute that I change the design to look like an owl, I can go after or target Harry Potter lovers. The minute that I make the design and I change the design to look something to do with gaming, I can then go after gamer gifts. Okay, so before we get into the presentation, I will say that this presentation or video is almost an hour long. Don't be discouraged by that. If you need to pause in the middle, pause and come back. But I've also put chapters in the description below so that you can fast forward, fast forward to a very specific part of the video. However, I really encourage you to watch the video from the beginning until the end because it's just full of golden nuggets. I put so much time and effort into creating this, so I encourage you to watch it until the end. If you're new here and you don't know who I am, my name is Sharon Evan. I am an Amazon seller. I'm also an Amazon FBA coach for the last three years. I've worked with many, many hundreds and hundreds, and I'm not kidding. You can go and look at my, my reviews on my website, hundreds of um, Amazon sellers on a one-on-one -on -one level. So it's not that I sold them a course and said goodbye. It was one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's just really helped me to be outside of the bubble of my own products and my own brands. So I have a lot of experience when it comes to product, product development, and obviously uh, product differentiation as well. So if you are uh, interested in watching videos like this one or others, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit that like button if you enjoy this video and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I bring out more videos. So this presentation is fully focused on product differentiation. Um, so obviously you need to already know of the type of niche or of a, you know, have found a product in order to even think about how to differentiate it. If you're not there yet, that's fine. You can still watch this video. It will still help you to think outside the box. But if you need to actually find a product in the first place, just remember that I also have a product research and sourcing course, which is an A to Z course on how to actually find a product, develop it, find how to differentiate it, and, and everything that's to do with sourcing, how to find the manufacturers, all of my worksheets, everything is in that course. So make sure to check it out as well. The link will be in the description below. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so we are now inside of my computer and we're starting with the presentation. So differentiate or die. How do we stand out from the rest and kick the competition's ass? This presentation is all about um, survival in an era of killer competition, um, which really I kind of took that from the, from the book, Differentiate or Die. It's a very old book um, by Jack Trout. I really recommend that you read that, although, you know, it probably is about 20 plus years old. But anyway, great book. And it's exactly what our presentation's about, because in my opinion and my experience in today's world of product development, selling on Amazon, FBA um, and e-commerce in general, you need to find a way to differentiate, especially for Amazon. Otherwise, your brand may or product may die. So how do we become a shark in a small pond? Um, a lot of people want to be a small fish in a large pond. They're looking for really, really big 
um, and niches or really, really big categories. And they are happy to just get a piece of that pie or they're looking to become a shark in a large, um, in, in a very, very large pond, which is a lot harder and extremely costly. I am looking to basically be this. You can see my terrible, <laughs> although it doesn't look that bad, my terrible Photoshop skills. I'm aware I've put this uh, huge shark in this little fish pond, uh, fish bowl, because it's exactly what I want to be. I want to get into a niche and I want to dominate in that niche. Now, that's a whole other story about how do we actually find products to sell on Amazon. Um, if you need help finding products, I do have a product research and sourcing course. This is the link to find that. The link's also below. Apart from that, I have probably about 11 to 14 or so uh, product research videos on this YouTube channel, apart from this one, which is to do with product differentiation, which is still part of product research. There is also this one over here. Um, product Research 2022, find your next niche and build a brand on this YouTube channel. So if you're actually struggling to find a product in the first place, that's kind of step one. And that's where either there are other YouTube videos I have or my course, which is very specific just around product research and sourcing. A to Z, uh, very, very in depth. I made a whole course about it from all of my experience. I encourage you to join that course. Um, otherwise, then we're going to focus specifically on product differentiation in this presentation. So differentiation when it comes to specifically e-commerce, what does physical product differentiation mean when it comes to digital shelving? I call basically what we do digital shelving when you think about Amazon FBA and you think about selling on Amazon um, and you think about when you type in a keyword. They're just like when you are walking down an aisle in a store, but on Amazon specifically, what we have is digital shelving. When it comes to selling on Amazon or a marketplace similar to Amazon, your differentiation has to stand out from the search page. They have to be able to understand what's different about your product and what is your differentiation. Um, and by the way, some people may call it your USP, unique selling proposition. I'm really gonna stick to, to differentiation. If the shopper needs to click on your product in order to understand the differentiation, then you cannot rely on your differentiation point to get the click in the first place. This is why better quality is not a differentiation, but rather a must, unless it can be presented in the main image. So sometimes I'll say to someone, hey, you know, someone will book a coaching call with me and I'll say, what's what's the differentiation point in your product? And they say, well, my product is, you know, a, a lot better quality than everyone else's. And I'll turn back and say, but they need to buy your product in order to understand that the product is a lot better than everyone else's. So therefore that's not a differentiation point. It, it, it's a differentiation point on the one hand, but it's not enough in order for, to get you to get that click in the first place for them to go and then buy your product. Um, so I call better quality a must. You always want to have the number one quality product. You always want to have the best quality product, you know, ever. Um, I go really in depth into quality assurance, uh, etc. Also in that course, and also I have videos about that somewhere on this channel as well. Um, so when you think about your differentiation point, it must be seen from the search page. Absolutely has to be seen from the search page. And the reason is if they need to click on you in order to find out what the differentiation point is, then, you know, why would they click on you in the first place? Because of your title, because of your main image, because of what, right? And that's why we want to be able to have a differentiation point that will stick out from the main search page so that we can then get that click and then show them the rest of our images, etc., and educate them further um, about our product. So this is an example of what it looks like, uh, obviously in a shelf on an in a, in a store. If you think about it, the um, the products that are at eye level here at the top, those are the products that usually are the products uh, that are being promoted by the supermarket, either because or or uh, the the store, uh, either because they're trying to get rid of those products, either because they're the best sellers. Um, or for whatever main, for whatever reason, those are the products that they put at eye level and that are very, very easy to access. You don't need to bend down. You don't need to go up too high. They're usually at eye level and uh, in, within everyone's reach. Those are usually the products that are either, like I said, the best sellers or the one that they're trying to push out. So that's how it is in a store. The difference also in a store though, is that someone can actually, you know, hold your product. They can see your product and hold it and feel it and possibly even use it. 
Whereas on Amazon, what we have, rather than those physical stores, we uh, shelves, we have digital shelving, right? So we have us and all of our competitors one by one next to us, under us, on top of us. The sponsored ads are being uh, pushed at the top within Amazon today. You have uh, the editorial recommendations, you have video ads, you have so many different places that are being pushed. Um, and then you've got that the organic ranking. So therefore, you have to be able to stand out and actually get those clicks. And that's why differentiation is so important. It all starts with knowing who your buyers are first. So before we actually get into my examples, it all starts with knowing who your buyers are. Who are you selling to? In order to know how to differentiate, you must know A, who your buyer is. Uh, who is it that you're actually selling to? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a pregnant woman? Is it a stay-at-home dad? Is it a five-year-old kid? Is it the range uh, for little girls between three to six, etc.? Who is it that you're selling to? What's important to them? What do they love? What do they hate about the product? What do they need? What do they absolutely need? And only once you know who your buyer avatar actually is, then you can know how to differentiate correctly for that specific buyer avatar. Um, on this YouTube channel, I do have a video about how to create your buyer avatar and there is a worksheet there. So make sure to check that out. I'm pretty sure that video should also come up now. You can open it in a different link and uh, watch that later. Um, you also want to make sure you know who your com key competitors are. You want to be able to, when it comes to your differentiation point and, and for you to think about how to differentiate, you want to be able to know what is already on the market so you know how to then make something better, basically. And the way to do that is to know your competitors inside out. So you must know who your competitors are inside out, which includes knowing exactly what they offer so that your differentiation will stand out from them and will stand out from the crowd. I do have two different videos, possibly even more videos. These are the two that I uh, could think of in the first place and um, that exist on, on this YouTube channel about how to know who your competitors are, how to track your competitors, etc. So make sure to look out for those. It'll also be in the description down below. So in this specific presentation, I'm going to speak about five different ways that one could differentiate a product. I don't think that necessarily one is enough uh, on certain ones here, uh, either combined of at least three to four of these, but definitely not just one. So for example, we're going to be speaking about product um, packaging, how you can use your product packaging to stand out when it comes to differentiation. Usually this isn't enough. It's not going to be enough in order in, in many scenarios, not always, it's not going to be enough in order to actually um, persuade the, the buyer to buy from you and not from your competitor. Um, design change, which in, in very in many scenarios can be enough just to change the design of the product. Bundling of products together can also be enough in many scenarios. Um, and then repurposing products to fit a different need or a different buyer avatar. And you'll understand what I mean when you when we get to that part in the presentation. And then changing materials of the product to fit a certain niche or need. Um, of, like I said, all of the above or combined is recommended. Okay, so let's start with the first one, product packaging. Sometimes you can really stand out and also connect with your customers through very unique packaging. This is also a great way to put across your brand identity. In many cases, having a unique packaging can help your product to stand out or pop out in the search page, which could lead to more clicks, which could, which could then lead to more conversions. There are times where customers may judge the quality of a product according to the design or material, although product packaging can be a great point of differentiation. In many cases, it's not enough and there should be more to your differentiation point. However, let's explore what some differentiated packaging may look like. So from now on, most of this is just going to be images. Okay, so I love this example. You can see here what a regular brush may look like. Um, then when you add some sort of packaging to it, this is also in the middle here, what it could look like. And then we have this really awesome brand called, I think it's Poilu or something like that. Um, where they've basically turned the packaging into like a man's face and then the brush hair looks like either a goatee or a mustache, right? Really, really stands out whether it was in a physical store or, or on Amazon or online. 
It could be the exact same brush that everyone else sells. It could be the exact same quality as everyone else's, but just the fact that the packaging looks like that, it really, really st does stand out. And same thing here with this pasta. We have normal sort of pasta packaging, um, another form of pasta packaging. And then we have here this pasta that really, really stands out. It makes the pasta look like it is the hair of this woman in the packaging. And, and of course, you know, these may, because of the packaging looking like this uh, and actually being on cardboard, for, et cetera, for example, it may cost a couple of cents more, um, but it also then allows you to charge that little bit more. Um, and there's always going to be that buyer avatar that's willing to pay more money for perceived value. But you can see how much this, stands out same thing here um, we can see here how we have you know just normal bubble gum and then here how they're using the bubble gum to look like teeth and again it stands out looks cool pops out um, here we've got this wool could have this type of um, label packaging or it could have packaging like this that looks like a sheep that it, it also this wool is obviously made out of sheep's wool so um, great packaging idea here um, and this is also a great example a lot of wooden utensils and things like that aren't even really put in packaging they're sort of just put in like an OPP bag um, versus looking at something like this where it could be the exact same product but the minute that it looks here it looks like it's a tree it looks like it's eco-friendly okay it stands out super super simple products that you can turn into products that really really stand out just because of the packaging more packaging examples here this one i absolutely love this little i think it's a little squirrel or a chipmunk you can see there's um there's some sort of um, nuts here and how you know it makes it look like it's the cheek of the squirrel or chipmunk um and because it's got so much nuts in its, in its mouth and it just really 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 stands out and looks great same thing here with the uh, dog treats that look like teeth um, and, and everything here you can see great packaging that really stands out from the very beginning same thing here this is actually something that went viral on I think it was TikTok and Instagram um, these are called fit buns and basically you can see that their packaging makes it look like it is a six pack um, when you know buns usually aren't really that uh, healthy um, and these are healthy ones supposedly and you can see how the packaging straight away also has that psychology of where it makes you feel like well if I eat this it's going to give me a six pack like that right if you're that naive but anyway great packaging example these here are like super simple super cute these this is basically hair tires but they've put it around this type type of packaging to fit the you know young girl type of age group and where it looks like a tutu of a little girl over here a lot of wine is given to people as a gift you can see the minute that you turn it over it looks like a bouquet of flowers really really great packaging smart packaging a lot of this is very simple products and then the packaging's just been um you know made to be attention grabbing um this is an example of a brand called zombie beauty where at the end of the day the formulas of their beauty products are more or less the exact same formulas of their com of their competitors um but yet their packaging is so unique and their branding so this isn't just packaging differentiation this is also branding and in some of the examples that i show you guys it'll be beyond just one thing it may be in this, like it is in this case it's both their packaging and their branding together so here you can see their packaging is on the one hand super simple it's a white packaging which isn't always very good on a white background when you think about amazon and you think about your hero image having white packaging when you are only able to have a white background white on white isn't the best scenario but this does really stand out if you go to amazon and you look at it, it does really stand out and it's because of the rest of what's going on on the packaging um and at the end of the day like they call this a mummy pack it's an anti-wrinkle and lifting pack because once you put it on it's like this black um cream well cream that then once you put it on it gets all crinkly etc and that's what it looks like here or where they call this the pumpkin pack etc so it's both a branding of this but also it really stands out at the end of the day it's the same product as everyone else's so also making packaging um, for on the go. So you could have a product that's the same as everyone else's, but the minute that you put it into packaging that's for on the go, it could stand out. Um, one of my favorite examples is this one here. It's the puzzle. 
This is a puzzle, which is a puzzle just like all the other pu puzzles, but it's made for on the go. The packaging is, is for on the go. Same thing with this. If you think of um, as a child growing up, you know, eating, um, we call it Gear Bear. I don't know what uh, other people may call it, but they were usually, Gear Bear was usually in like this little tin. Uh, today, you don't really have those tins anymore. They've been turned into these sort of like squeezy type of things. Uh, even I gave this to, to my son as well. Um, so it could be more or less the same food, but the fact that it's made for on the go is very helpful, um, etc. Uh, also packaging that can be made for storage. One of my favorite examples is this one here. Very, very, very smart example. So this is dishwash and no, it is washing powder. And you can see that also the packaging looks like a washing machine. So not only does it really, really stand out, not only does it also um, solve my problem for needing storage for, to, for where I can store um, the washing powder, but it also looks really cool. And um, and yeah, so packaging made for, for storage or when a product comes with packaging made for storage, like these Pokemon cards, right? They're Pokemon cards. They could have come in like just a little pack that you throw away, but they is specifically come in a little tin box that you can then keep those Pokemon cards in. Um, for example, these makeup uh, bamboo removal cotton pads. Um, but if you look at the packaging, the packaging is made for um, to be able to actually store the product in it. So also making packaging that are not only stands out, but also can uh, help to store the product as well. Um, and then we have the, when it comes to product packaging, product packaging that also has a functionality to it. This is a great example when it comes to uh, Pizza Hut in Japan and also knowing that your buyer avatar. So in Japan, um, you know, kawaii, which means cute and, and all sorts of like gadgety things are a big deal. Um, it's kind of built within their their culture. I'm not Japanese. I've just done a lot of research on this stuff. And you can see here that uh, Pizza Hut in Japan specifically created this super cool effect, basically, or functionality to this pizza box where basically the little table that you usually get in the pizza box to help it so that the top of the pizza box doesn't, um, you know, crush the pizza. They turned it here into like this little projector basically that you pop, pop out this little hole here you put this little table projector here you put your phone there and then it's supposed to project whatever is on your phone onto the wall um super super cool and uh great and, and again i'm not showing you these ideas in order for you to copy paste them i'm showing you these ideas to basically plant a seed in your brain to think about how you can take these ideas that i'm showing you and use them for whatever is relevant for your specific product or niche um more examples of product packaging that also has a functionality to it um, some awesome examples. So the one on the bottom right, we looked at pasta packaging earlier. This is another pasta packaging where um, the top of the packaging, you twist it. Uh, if you want to make pasta for one or if you want to make pasta for two, it basically gives you serving sizes. So it has a functionality to it. If you look at here, I don't think people really drink Corona beer anymore ever since COVID, but um, Corona beer made this sort of um, game on their packaging where you use the um, beer bottle tops to basically play this game. So a lot of people, when they drink, they play, uh, you know, different drinking games. So basically here you just use the packaging, uh, flatten it out and it turns into a game. Knowing who your buyer avatar is, knowing what they do with the product, and then you can see here how they brought functionality to their packaging. Same thing here. So this is a um, pack of chips, basically kind of similar to the whole Pringles packaging, only that with this one specifically, you cut, you have this little piece and you cut it the top out and then it opens up and turns into a bowl. Um, on the bottom left here, we have this butter where the top of it then turns into a knife. So again, packaging that has some sort of functionality to it, especially if you can show that obviously from the first, pa first page can also help with that buying decision when the buyer is looking at your product. Same thing on the top left. This is uh, product packaging of some soft toys for kids or plushies for kids. And then the packaging itself turns into a dollhouse. So thinking outside the box, great other example on the bottom left here we have these pencils where there is basically a, a bit of grip tape there that you can then sharpen the pencil with 
So again, packaging that also has functionality to it. You can see here, this is called the coaster box. It's a box that comes for this specific cup. And basically the box itself turns into coasters. Again, packaging that has functionality to it. So that was that for the product packaging example. I hope that was uh, you know, helpful and sort of implanted a seed in your brain for how you can uh, spice up your product packaging. The next example is design of the product. So um, probably one of the best ways to differentiate a product is to change the design of the product. You don't need to be an inventor in order to sell on Amazon or to sell physical products in general. You can take a product that already exists, but change the design of it to appeal to a very specific buyer avatar or a very specific need. This is not as complicated as it sounds or as it looks. And most of the time, the concept of the product already exists, and now you're simply changing the way that it looks or feels. Sometimes you may need a graphics designer, a sketch artist, or a CAD technician or other service providers to help with the design works. And other times your supplier may be able to use their own internal team to help you with this. Things you need to consider when it comes to uh, changing the design of the product. Number one, you wanna um, maybe get a design patent on your product in order to design your IP, uh, in order to protect your IP. This isn't a absolute must, not everyone needs to go out and get a design patent, not everyone can get a, de a design patent. Um, design patents can A, really help you when it uh, help to increase your multiple if you ever exit. B, uh, once you do end up possibly getting copycats, um, design patents can help you to A, take down the copycats on Amazon. They can help you to take them their website down. They can help you to take their accounts down on Instagram. And I'm speaking from experience from this. This is stuff that I've heard. This is stuff that I've actually gone and done, whether it was for myself or through my clients. So. I have a great law firm that I work with. I'll put their details down below. But again, not every single person that changes the design of a product is A, going to be able to get a design patent or B, should get a design patent. A patent only is you know, as good as your ability to protect it. If you can't protect it or don't mean to protect it, there's no point in you doing it. Um, you may also need to get your own mold made. And uh, this is something that you need to take into consideration when you when it comes into your budget. Many different products out there, once you change the, the design of it, is, are going to require a mold. Um, and now that's getting a little bit more into product development, which by the way, I get into quite in depth in my product research and sourcing course. I consider myself a product developer first before I was even selling on Amazon. That's basically what I was uh, doing. So when it comes to uh, that, take that into consideration that you may need your own mold. Not every single product is going to need that. If you're taking a cup and you're just changing the design of the printing on it, you're not gonna get a mold, right? So you're not gonna need a mold. So, but if you're taking a cup and you're changing the cup to look like an owl, then yes, you may need your own mold. So take these things into consideration. Um, you can use community uh, groups around your product, like Facebook groups, or you could use something like PigFu, etc., or other resources to verify your design idea makes sense for your product, your buyer avatar, and for Amazon. This is something that I almost always do. I will find out where my buyer avatars hang out, and I'm going to hang out there with them. Um, and if possible, I'm going to ask questions when it comes to the kind of design that I want to do. Otherwise, yes, we also have something like PicFu where you can basically put up polls to ask different things, um, you know, like, would you prefer this design or this design, etc. I'll put a link for that down below as well. Um, and also take into consideration that making a major design change to a product can really delay the speed to market, which is something important to take into account. So sometimes if your product is going to require a lot of product development or a lot or some major design change, by the time that you, you know, may get your CADs down, that your CADs done, they may um, make your um, for a sample, they send you the sample, there may be a problem with the sample, they make you another sample, then, you know, they go in, you pay for the production, the product gets produced, you know, and then it gets shipped, it may take six months. And that's something that you need to take into consideration. And sometimes it may be a better idea to start off with something more, a more simple version of that product while you're working on the more complicated version. Very dependent, I would need to see the product uh, in order to know whether it makes sense or not. But um, 
that's that. Now let's get into examples. So these are some uh, examples of products that if you think about it, they're not inventions. They're just products where people have taken something that exists and just changed the design of it. Um, let's go with one of my favorite examples and it's the anti-theft lunch bags. So it's kind of a gag product, a funny product, um, which always makes me laugh. And I also think it's kind of genius. So whether you buy this kind of product as a joke or whether really people are stealing your food every day, um, this is a really funny product where basically it's a sandwich bag, but they have made mold um, printing on it where it basically looks like your sandwich has mold in it. Really, really smart, very funny product. At the end of the day, it's a normal sandwich bag that literally just has green spots on it. If we look on the top left, these are, this is a juice drink where basically the design of the packaging has been made to look like a dumbbell where then you can use the product as a dumbbell. Um, on the top right here, if you imagine yourself with your children uh, on the beach. You know, are you gonna buy them just a normal ice uh, ice block or a popsicle, depending on where you live in the world? Um, or are you gonna buy them one where once they finish it, then the uh, stick turns into a little dinosaur and they can play a game in the sand? Uh, on the bottom left here, um, we have the cup holders, which have been made into like a cup holder bag. Really, really smart product for a very specific buyer avatar. Um, and if you think about it, they didn't invent cup holders. They basically took what would be a normal cup holder and added a little handle to it. Very smart design change, again, for a very specific buyer avatar, etc. We've got a lot to get through, so we'll keep going. Um, this is one of my favorite examples, how you can simply change the design of a product and uh, or repurpose a pretty simple product and sell it to someone else. So if I was to tell you today that I want to sell a cup on Amazon, a lot of people will say, oh, cups or, or coffee cups are so saturated. But the minute that I change the design to look like an owl, I can go after or target Harry Potter lovers. The minute that I make the design and I change the design to look something to do with gaming, I can then go after gamer gifts. Um, the minute that I change the design to look like uh, here, where it says queen of everything, I can then target women specifically. The minute that I change the design to look like this one here, where it says queen bee mini me, that can be a uh, mum, a gift for a mum. The one on the bottom left, this is a million dollar product. You can see here they changed, I even think they got a design pattern on this. They changed, uh, they basically turned uh, different types of coffee cups or hot chocolate cups to have different types of hoops. This one specifically has a basketball hoop and it's changed, it's shaped like a basketball. So you can see that sometimes you can take a pretty simple product and change the design of it and focus on, on a different or very specific buyer avatar. Um, same thing here. So you can see we have the normal watering cans. If you were to go on something like Helium 10, you'll see that watering cans have, I haven't looked this up for a long time, but last time I looked, it was something like between 100 to 200,000, even 300,000 at some point of the year. Um, search volume every single month on Amazon. So watering cans have huge, huge demand. But if you look here, someone has basically taken what these would require two products. They basically added the spray version to it at the top. Such a simple and genius design change. The one on the right, you can see here it is. So if you think about watering cans, they have a lot of volume to it and shipping when it comes to logistics and um, with shipping. Um, it goes by volume weight or whichever it's higher. But when it comes to volume, you don't want the product to necessarily be huge, especially if it's a pretty cheap product. Um, so whoever made this, it's not only, uh, you know, very, very portable, but it also is something that doesn't take up a lot of space. Or here where you can basically, you know, watering cans exist, but the the, re, the minute that I make it an, um, a unicorn watering can, I can then focus on kids. So again, I'm just implanting seeds in your brain of different ways that you can think about um, changing a design of a product. More examples here, I'll focus on um, this one specifically on the right hand side. So gnomes, garden gnomes are a big thing. Um, on Amazon and in the world in general, the minute that I make a garden gnome that has, you know, a rainbow coming out of its butt, basically, um, you know, I, it's a funny gnome. And this kind of stuff just does really, really well on Amazon. 
Um, if we look at this little biker norm, you know, giving the finger, um, again, these are the types of things where it, it's really just changing the design of the product and it can go a long way and make a lot of money. On the bottom left, it says here, Gnome Sweet Gnome, sweet gnome and the um, hat or whatever can be changed according to the time of the year. So it could just be a normal um, hat or it could turn into the Halloween hat or to Santa hat or to a July 4th hat. So um, really, really smart differentiation point of how you can take a product and just change the design of it. Um, yeah. Okay, so that was the design change. We're now going to get into product bundles. So bundles can be a great way to differentiate a product. However, the product bundle must make sense. I've seen a lot of people create really stupid bundles, bundles where I've been like, how do these two products even make sense? So some great ways to find products to bundle together with a product you're looking into. You could look at the frequently bought with on the product page. You can look at customers also bought. You can go to Etsy, Pinterest, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, etc., and also look at other sponsored products on the listing as well. Um, so these are some examples of you know some really smart bundles. On the top left, we can see see that that's a bundle that's basically being made as a tooth fairy gift for little girls. Um, taking some pretty generic products, change the design of it. This is again an example where a few different products, a, a few different differentiations have been combined. So it is the design of the product, it is the bundle, um, it's also the repurposing. This is basically a little hanging pillar and they've repurposed it for a tooth fairy product. Okay, so you can see how uh, combining different differentiation points can, can really help. Um, the one on the right, so for example, again, it got, comes back to knowing who your buyer avatar is, but if you do some research about nurses specifically in America, nurses in America need to buy all of their own gear. Um, that's why there's quite a bit of search volume for different things specifically for nurses. Um, and if you were to look at, and by the way, I know this just from doing a lot of research uh, about the nurses niche. It's probably the niche I've been speaking about for about two and a half years. I'm definitely not saying that it's a good niche to get into. I'm just, again, giving you ideas and then you take that for whatever products you're looking into. If you were to look at a stethoscope case, you'll see that many of them are frequently bought with um, the little pen lights or with the... Um, the bandage scissors okay so that for example could have been a smart bundle to make and then purpose that as a, a gift for nurses for example etc i want to keep going um this is an example of a no-brainer uh, uh bundle so let's just say that you wanted to sell a uh, chef's knife and you were doing all sorts of well this is exactly what happened when you do a, uh, with, with me and uh, the person that um, I launched this product with, when you basically were to look at any YouTube channel or any YouTube video around this type of chef's knife, every single chef was using a cutting board, every single one, yet no one had bundled it with a cutting board. Um, now today that differentiation point probably is not going to work, but you know, a year and a half to two years ago when we had, um, when we had launched this, it was a good enough of a differentiation point, which then, you know, the goal is then to build a brand around that. So basically it was taking a chef's knife, um, this little leather thing that I've just forgotten what it's called, where the knife also can be stored in, plus selling that together with a chopping board because almost everyone that uses this type of knife needs a chopping board. So that's kind of like a no brainer uh, um, product bundle. And then there's bundles when it comes to gift sets. Gift sets are an amazing way to make a lot of money on Amazon. And in almost every situation, not all obviously, but almost every situation, it is, it's rather bundle or design dependent rather than review dependent. What I mean by that is even if you have heaps and heaps and heaps of competition, but your bundle is so good for that specific buyer avatar, you're probably gonna be able to get sales and a rank from the very beginning if you did the you, you know you did the work correctly and made the right type of product so an example here if you think about this this is a gamer box it's a gift box targeted specifically at gamers what did they do here at the end of the day they took a tumbler a hat um these socks i think that's like a little I forgot what they're called like thing that you put on your phone 
and a keychain. Almost all of these are generic products where basically they've changed what is written or printed on the product and turned it into a uh, box for gamers. Right, this would be such an easy bundle to make. There isn't that much product development that goes into here. It's really just about having, um, you know, a graphics designer being able to make the design that's printed on the product. Apart from that, they're copy pasted products that you just basically have put together in targeted gamers specifically. Um, same thing over here. If you look at this really amazing um, gift set for women. At the end of the day, it's a notebook, um, a little sort of um, bag for traveling with. Um, bath bombs, shower bombs, a candle, etc. They didn't invent these products. These are basically pretty generic products that they just made an amazing design for it and targeted a very specific buyer avatar. Um, same thing here. At the end of the day, it's again a wine tumbler, coasters, a um, chopping board and, or a cutting board and some towels, but they're all targeted as new gift home um, gift sets, new home gift sets. So sometimes you can take pretty generic products, just change the design that's written on them or printed on them and put it as a gift box and sell it to a very specific buyer avatar. I've seen a lot of people make a lot of money from different types of gift sets. There are so many niches out there. You just need to you know, open up your mind um, and, and know how to look out for them. And I teach that in my product research and sourcing course as well. Okay, the fourth way of differentiating a product is repurposing a product. So what do I mean by repurposing a product? Sometimes a great differentiation point is simply to sell a product that's already sold, even if it's saturated, but focus on a different type of buyer avatar that most are focusing on or find a totally new purpose for the product. In many situations, this can be um, a quick and easy product to make and it already exists. And initially all you're doing is focusing on a much smaller or a very different buyer avatar. A great example is these hair ties. So you can see here, these are just normal hair ties, nothing special about it. But the minute that I write bride on it or bride tribe or bride to be or whatever it may be, it's a bridal shower favor gift. Um, so that's what I mean by repurposing, taking something that's sold to a broader buyer avatar and then focusing it on a very specific buyer avatar. Um, we have some awesome examples here. So we know about bath bombs. Um, and then you can see that someone went uh, and, and made shower bombs, right? Bath bombs, not everyone takes baths. Someone basically went, squeeze them and turn them into shower bombs. So you're taking a product that's already existing on the market, a bath bomb, and repurposing it for a shower. Same thing here, this is a normal belt. And then the minute that you change the buckle from a um, metal buckle to a plastic buckle, you then have a metal free belt. So you've taken a belt, but repurposed it to a very specific buyer avatar. Same thing with gardening seeds. The minute that you change the packaging of it and you say something like baby in bloom or something like that, you turn it into party favors. Um, more example, this is a really uh, great example. So we have a, um, a uh, bib here, normal silicone bibs, which are usually sold to, you know, for babies. The minute that you um, put this type of design on it, it can be also sold to seniors. You know, a lot of seniors really do need bibs and are very, um, uh, what's the word, a very embarrassed of them. The minute that you change the design of it, you sell it to a very specific buyer avatar. This is, you know, a little bit um, R18 and a little bit, you know, of a funny gag product, but around Valentine's Day, these are products that make a lot of money. So I won't read out what it says here. You can obviously see it. Um, but there are many, many products uh, around Valentine's Day as well, although they're seasonal products, but that you can basically take, you know, at the end of the day, this is a repurposed product. They took a bib and they repurposed it to a, you know, a very specific buyer avatar and it's a gag product. Um, this one here, uh, I'm pretty sure that this has a design pen on it, on it. It's basically a woman that I'm pretty sure was also either on, um, Oh, I've just forgotten the uh, the UK version of it, of, of Shark Tank. Um, but anyway, a woman that uh, I think invented this and, and got a design pattern on it of some sort, where it's basically a scarf that turns into also a bib, again, for people who have different types of disabilities. So taking a product that already exists, making a tiny little change to it and repurposing it to a different buyer avatar. 
Um, another example would be candles. So if you were to tell you know someone today that's been selling on Amazon for a long time, I want to sell candles, they'll probably tell you not to do it for two reasons. One, because um, you know it could be a dangerous product, but you can always get around that with uh, certifications. Um, two, maybe because obviously it's a meltable, um, which you would need to make sure that your product doesn't melt in a certain types of temperatures because Amazon has uh, multiple seasons where they don't allow products that are multiple to be sold on Amazon. Um, but another reason what may be because it's super, super saturated. And I say no, because there are many, many niches within that and you can always repurpose it. So instead of just selling like a normal candle, what if I wrote this is for you because your room stinks and I repurposed it as a product for gamers. So again, gifts for gamers, right? As the world goes more and more into digital, etc., so does the gaming niche. You go in to, into Google Trends and type in gaming, you can see how much the gaming niche is growing and growing and growing and it's not going to stop, right? Um, so gifts for gamers, for example, or taking this and making it again, a funny product. I love you for your personality, but that mm, is a huge bonus. So again, I'm taking a normal candle, but I'm writing something different on it to focus on a very specific buyer avatar. This also, I'm pretty sure has some sort of patent on it. I, I'm pretty sure these people that made these were either on Shark Tank Australia or America, I can't remember. But basically they are uh, candles that turn into skeletons of whatever the uh, design of the candle is, right? I think they're called like skeleton candles or something like that. Um, this one here, meditation candles. This one here, it's a candle that's been uh, turned into a bundle and then repurposed as a party favor um, for um, for gender reveal or baby showers, I think. This one here, they're uh, being repurposed for christening favors. Okay, this one here has been uh, repurposed as a men's candle. This one here for succulent lovers. This one here for kawaii lovers. If you go on Amazon, you look up kawaii, there, it has something like 100,000 plus search volume a month, right? Remember, it means cute in Japanese. I explained that earlier. Um, there's a whole huge you know, community out there that loves like weird, cute shit. And they go on, on places like Amazon to buy it. So this one here. Um, this one here is a candle for makeup lovers, you know, for their cakes. So again, repurposing a product. I'm not trying to sell a candle. I'm trying to sell a candle to a very specific buyer avatar. Um, more repurposing a product idea. So you could be selling just a normal craft bag or you could be selling a funny craft bag. Um, this one says, for example, I really wouldn't get your hopes up or a fancy gift or wait for it or whoa, it's a puppy. It's really not. So it's a funny, um, funny gift uh, gift bags, ba bags, basically, um, rather than just this type of, you know, super um, simple craft bag. Or you could take that type of craft bag and repurpose it specifically to gamer birthday parties, right? The gaming niche again is really growing on Amazon and in the world in general. More kids are having um, birthday parties all around gamers. So for example, giving away the little, you know, gamer, um, gamer party favors, etc., and it's saying game on, or uh, taking it, repurposing it specifically for a brooms, um, for a grooms, not a brooms, for a grooms um, party, or whatever it may be. So again, repurposing a product. Another example of repurposing a product, so duct tape already exists, but the minute that I take that type of masking tape and I make it a little bit um, like of a grip tape and I make it look like a road, I'm now selling a product that can be repurposed for little boys or little girls to basically make roads on the ground in their house or outside or whatever it is and play with their toy cars. Or well, the minute that I take normal duct tape and I add some sort of glow in the dark um, powder to it, and I've got glow in the dark tape. Or the minute that I take duct tape and I write bedroom, bathroom, um, family room, living room, etc., I've now made duct tape for uh, people that are moving house that they put in their boxes, etc. So taking um, a product that exists on the market, changing whatever's written on it or printed on it, or just focusing basically on a different buyer avatar. Um, so this is a quick tip. And by the way, if you need uh, to pause the video and go take a break, do it, pause it, go take a break. 
and come back because this is so full of golden nuggets. You don't want to get tired. So if you need to pause and come back, do it. So this is a quick tip. One, uh, this is one of my product research methods that I teach really in depth in my product research and sourcing course. And it's about how I hang out where my buyer avatars hang out and I go into Facebook groups. So by hanging out where my buyers hang out, I can find so many products and great differentiation ideas. If in Facebook groups, go to media. Um, so this is a Kawaii Facebook group. You can see it has 46, thousand uh people uh, members in it when you if you just go straight to media you're just going to see a whole bunch of uh, photos of products that people are showing their rooms and inside of their rooms there's a million different products in there etc um so when you just go straight to media it's basically a shortcut to seeing images that usually have products in them also use a search button to niche down within a group so if this is a montessori group that has 353,000 people in it when i go to media i see a whole bunch of photos with different types of products in them this is a camping tips group it has 33,000 um members in it and again when i go to media i can see a whole bunch of products and i can read what they're talking about so that's just a quick golden nugget for you guys uh, that will a also help you find products and b also help you to find differentiation uh, points so when we talk about repurposing a product one of my favorite examples is this so in this Kawaii Facebook group uh, that has the 43,000 people in it, I saw this image where it is basically, it's a Glad, uh, which is a big brand, um, a rubbish bag that's pink and smells good. And you can see that a woman basically wrote, um, Target's really out here trying to help me live my best Kawaii life. And you can see there's 1,000 likes, 66 comments, 163 shares at the time of when I took this screenshot. At the end of the day, this is basically a bag that's been you know, made pink and smells good, but it's a garbage bag. But if you were to look up Kawaii Decor on Helium 10, you can see it has almost 20,000 search volume a month. You look up just the word Kawaii, it has almost 151,000 searches a month, right? So. Basically, at the end of the day, I could have taken a normal pink bag and bundled it together with a normal pink rubbish bin and uh, put some really cute packaging to it and repurposed it and sold it to the kawaii niche to a keyword like kawaii aesthetics, kawaii home decor, etc. So by doing something like that, I'm going after a specific buyer avatar, the kawaii lovers. I would be selling a trash can and a bag set, but I'd be targeting the kawaii related keywords. I could find many day to day products, but make them fit to this buyer avatar and repurpose them specifically and build a kawaii brand full of basic products and use the Facebook groups also to help me launch. So this is an example. So taking generic products and selling them to a specific buyer avatar. So I'm repurposing them to a very specific um, buyer avatar and giving them a different purpose. These types of products are very social media worthy or easy to find influencers to help to promote your product. They're easy to sell again and again to the same type of buyer avatar. And most of them are simple design changes, mostly. At the end of the day, this is a clothing, a cloth hanger. If you were to tell, you know, someone like me or, well, not me, but other big sellers out there or sellers out there that you're going to sell a cloth hanger, a lot of them would be like, dude, it's very, very saturated. But I would be like, well, how are you going to change the design? Who are you going to focus on? Right? So the minute that I change the design, make it look cute. I can then target kawaii aesthetics, kawaii decor, blah, 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 the kawaii related keywords. Same thing with bed sheets. Bed sheets may be really, really, um, um saturated but the minute that i put you know cute little things on it i can focus specifically and repurpose that specifically to um the kawaii uh buyer avatar same thing i could have written you know game over on it or whatever it may be now i'm targeting the gaming niche so taking a product that already exists giving it a twist and repurposing it to a different buyer avatar these are more examples of repurposing a product so you can see, you know, like this glow in the dark sleeping bag already exists. Pillows already exist. The minute that I change the design of a pillow and I make it look like a tooth, I could then create a tooth fairy pillow. I could add the glow in the dark material or powder to it. And then I've got glow in the dark um, tooth fairy pillows. And I've basically repurposed a pillow for tooth fairy little kids. Um, another example, we have, you know, the do not disturb sign that people put on doors. 
I can basically change what's written on it. Tooth Fairy, please visit me tonight and I've repurposed that product to Tooth Fairy Little Girls. So again, taking a product that already exists and repurposing it to a different buyer avatar. More examples here. You can take a screenshot, look into this later. I wanna to get to the end. I know this video is becoming really, really long. The last differentiation point. So changing the material and or ingredients of a product to fit a cause or a need. As the world becomes more and more pro eco-friendly, certain materials may stand out more to a certain type of buyer just because they believe in a certain cause. Also, sometimes you may see a product that is made out of one type of material, but you know that if it was made out of a different material, then it could be stronger, better, more durable, waterproof, or you could add an extra element to it, etc., which could fit a potential buyer or a specific buyer avatar. So let's look at some examples here. The only change here was either material or ingredients. Um, so I love this example. This is gift wrap. And basically what they've done is they've taken what is called seed paper and they've taken seed paper and made it a uh, gift wrap okay so basically you then take your gift wrap paper you put it in the ground and it turns into a flower right um so they've changed here the material of the gift wrap and and may you know use seed, pa seed paper um to do that over here for example they've added a uh, flame resistant element or finish to this shirt I already showed you guys this earlier as well, changing the bu the buckle of this belt to be plastic or something other than metal, um, which basically can target nickel, um, nickel people that are allergic to nickel, etc. Over here, this is a poppet. I'm definitely not telling you to sell a poppet. I'm just implanting ideas in your mind so you can think about different ways to differentiate your products. So an example here, they added glow-in-the-dark powder to this product and created it glow-in-the-dark, etc. More examples here. These two are my favorites. Here, basically, they took uh, cards, playing cards, and made them out of, it's. I'm pretty sure, some sort of... Um, plastic and they've made them waterproof, right? A lot of people uh, like to play different types of, um, you know, drinking games, etc. while they're in the pool. So waterproof playing cards. This one, they've basically taken a puzzle, made it um, magnetic, and now it is a puzzle that can be sold for, you know, targeting little kids that are on the go, right? Kids sitting in the back of a car playing this puzzle because it's magnetic, they're not gonna lose the pieces. Um, or these uh, silicon wine glasses. Again, I'm not telling you to sell these products. I'm implanting ideas in your mind, right? Glass products will break. Silicon products will not. Okay, so taking products and changing the material of it. Happy differentiating. Well done if you got through this entire presentation. I'm very, very positive that it will help you to think outside the box and to really sit down and think, how can I now differentiate my product after you know seeing my presentation? Um, this is where you can find me and you can obviously also go to my website, SharonEvan.com to either book a coaching call with me or look at my product research and sourcing course or just learn more about me. If you don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram, please do. And also don't forget to join my uh, Amazon FBA Alphas private label domination uh, Facebook group. Um, well done for watching this video. I really hope that it helped you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure to check out other videos and also the description of this video to look at things that I mentioned in this video as well. And I'll see you guys all in the next video.